This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, protesters put a stop to a passenger train on the weekend, although they claim it wasn't their intention. The Dunedin Forsyth Bar Stadium is undergoing a change of greenery as it prepares for the FIFA World Cup. And a nine-week-old kitten is helping those in Port Chalmers who are nervous about getting the Pfizer vaccine. Tenakoto Kato Kia ora, I'm Simon Anderson. A passenger train trip was cancelled after anti-coal activists shut down the Dunedin railway station, but pre protesters say that was never their intention. Protester Bruce, Bruce Mahalski was among those arrested and trespassed on the day. Eight members of the environmental group Extinction Rebellion were arrested after blocking a coal train across St Andrew Street about 7.20am on Saturday. With a bunch of sort of like-minded colleagues, we went down and we stopped the train that goes through Otapori Dunedin pretty much every day around this time of year, taking around, it's usually around 28 carriages of coal, about 500 tonnes altogether, uh, from the Takatimu mine down Ohai, and then goes to Clandy Boy, the big uh, Fonterra milk factory. About 20 people were on the tracks outside Dunedin Railway Station and north of the St Andrew Street level crossing, both in front and behind the train. Protester Bruce Maholsky was among those arrested and says they object to coal being used, saying Fonterra is one of the major polluters who plans to use coal for at least another decade. They burn it and that 500 tonnes a day turns into about 1,100 tonnes of atmospheric carbon and they're doing that to turn liquid milk into powder for export. He says they'd like the dairy giant to aim for 2025. The protest marks the one year anniversary of the group's first action to stop a coal train at the Eden Railway Station. Moholsky says their protest is part of Extinction Rebellion's international efforts to shine a light on global climate issues. Uh, the world's on fire. Um, I'm thinking of my children, I'm thinking of their children, I'm particularly thinking of the animals, the, the whole biosphere. Uh, it just makes me very sad um, to, to see all these beautiful animals and plants uh, becoming extinct. When he's not protesting, he runs the Museum of Natural Mystery and is also coordinating a nationwide poster competition to highlight climate issues and is hoping to inspire some action after years of talk fests. Every year it's put off to the next year and every year uh, we're going to talk some more and so it's just like the children often can cut through this, you know, the adult, what, what adults can't. Mahalski and the other seven protesters arrested on the weekend are due to appear in court at a later date. In Dunedin, the South Today. Lockdowns at a Winton school and kindergarten have been lifted after police flooded the Southland town following a firearms incident early this afternoon. Police say one person was injured after a firearms incident at noon. After 5pm this evening, St John has confirmed one person has been taken to Southland Hospital in a critical condition. Reporter Tony MacDonald said there were a number of armed police at the scene. Later in the afternoon, the school posted on their Facebook page police had advised it was now safe to come out of lockdown. An earlier post said the school had been in lockdown since 1.15pm following advice from police. Dunedin's Forsyth Bar Stadium grass has had a much needed cut and while it's not something you'd notice on TV, the turf is undergoing a specific rework for an upcoming World Cup. Cutting the grass to make it football ready. The lawnmowers are being put to work at Dunedin's Forsyth Bar Stadium with the first cut of the football friendly grass. New grass was planted last month and is needed for the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup with six games being hosted in Dunedin. About 16 days ago we put the seed in the ground and we've been watching it grow every day, it changes colour, um, which is pretty cool to see. So first cut today and um, now it's holding up really well. The top 20 millimetres of turf was ripped up, exposing the artificial grass, a process which usually takes place every two to three years. Preparing for the World Cup has changed the stadium's approach, with the grass length needing to be shorter for football, as well as ensuring they get the timing right. It would be nice to do it next year, have a wee bit too close to the FIFA tournament, so we've got a nice gap this year um, due to a few events being delayed and pushed back, um, so 
nice wee time to grow it in. We've got um, about eight, eight to nine weeks off uh, to get it nice and ready, so should be good to go. Staff will be keeping an eye on the grass and making sure it gets a trim every two to three days. In Dunedin, the South Today. A lack of nurses is seeing Dunedin Hospital's intensive care and high dependency units go unused. The Southern District Health Board is struggling to find enough nurses to care for patients who should be using them. The SDHB is lacking the staff to fill all of its beds with patients while maintaining safe staffing procedures. The Health Board is not alone, however, as all District Health Boards are experiencing staff shortages. A report by SDHB Chief Executive Chris Flem Fleming says some elective surgeries are being cancelled to ensure there are available beds for acute patients. Fleming says COVID border restrictions are making it difficult to recruit more nurses and vaccine mandates are also affecting staffing. If you're a bit nervous about getting the jab, Kevin the Kitten is here to help. The adorable nine-week-old Burmese ragdoll is becoming the star attraction at Port Chalmers Pharmacy, calming people around their vaccinations. Might this nine-week-old kitten be cute enough to entice the most vaccine shy of people. Um, and it just went down so well. All of our patients really seem to love having him there. Um, and it just made it a really friendly environment. The Burmese ragdoll named Kevin had to join his human, student pharmacist Nicole Kennedy, at work out of necessity. But maybe the perfect solution, thanks to Kennedy having an open minded manager. And when we first got him, he. Um, I had to come into work on Saturday because we've been working Saturdays for our COVID clinic and um, I didn't want to leave him at home on his own and so my manager here at the pharmacy, Angela, suggested to just bring him into work. Kevin seems pretty unfazed by all the attention from strangers and Kennedy says it makes the mandatory injection and wait time fly by and some see him in the window so just pop in. Yeah, no, people seem to love it. Um, it's been really good. Like, people have just come off the street to come give him a pat, and, like, people end up staying longer than they need to because they're just hanging out with him. So it's been good. Um, and especially when you have to hang around for about 15 minutes after your vaccine, it's good to have something to entertain people while they're waiting. After posting a photo of the fluffy feline on social media, he became an online hit. <laughs> and like so many young stars, it can get a bit much sometimes. Oh, he loves it, yeah. <laughs> Every now and then he gets a bit overwhelmed and like walks off and hides and then he comes back out and he's running around with everyone again. Nicole Kennedy says it's really nice that people have been reaching out and there's no sign of Kevin ever needing to pause for effect. In Dunedin, the South Today. If Akine is still to come on the South Today, much unveiling, both good and bad. A sculpture, a bike park and a man on a car roof. We'll tell you all about that after the break. Inside are all sorts of innovations from all over China. It's certainly being on a bike, uh, the frustrations you get when people are behind you, they're impatient, you know, it's only five or ten seconds more out of your day and when you think about it, we're on a lot longer journey than you are. And just keeping space, it's not hard to give a metre, you know, even if it means waiting a minute or so to pass. maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
Namaino, welcome back. A 73-year-old woman got a shock when a stranger stripped off and jumped on the roof of her car. Senior Sergeant Anthony Bond said police were called to Queen Street in Dunedin at 8pm on Saturday. The woman was parked waiting for her grandson and his two friends when an unknown 24-year-old man stripped down to his sneakers and ran up to the bonnet of her car, jumping on the roof multiple times. He damaged the vehicle before falling off and injuring his right leg. Inquiries into locating the suspect were ongoing and police asked that he hand himself in before police came to him, Senior Sergeant Bond said. If you've been to the Octagon recently, you may have noticed a new addition. The Quartet Two-Horner sculpture was unveiled on Friday by artist Aisha Green. The sculpture is a replica of a carved entrance at the Otako Mirai and is made of aluminium. During the unveiling, designer Green thanked those who supported her. It was picked by a selection panel at the start of last year and cost the Dunedin City Council $65,000. The artwork looks to show the Dunedin City Council's efforts to celebrate and embed mana whenua, identity, values and traditions in the city's urban environment. Mountain bikers are revelling over the new clay track in Queenstown which was finally rider ready on Friday. The Kerry Drive course had some of the best bikers in the world give it a test run at the Crankwork Summer Series Pump Track event. Throughout the weekend, local and international riders participated in the Summer Series events hosted in Queenstown. Mountain bikers got stuck into the pump track, which was hosted alongside the downhill event. Riders are travelling around central towns competing in a range of different events. The next leg of the series will be held in Cadrona on Wednesday. After the break on the south today, the Highlanders show off the new kits and new do's and we check out an Aratown food and wine event. Ha koko akinei. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Just plan your route a little bit, choose nice and quiet roads. In the winter it's always nice to ride north and south. Uh, that way you get the, the driest route and less likely to hit black ice.
holiday season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Hoki mai anō. Veteran hooker Liam Coltman was barely recognisable when he fronted for a Highlanders photo shoot at Cargill's Castle. He was looking resplendent in his Highlanders, new Highlanders kit, of course, but that wasn't the most striking aspect of his new look. Just after the Super Rugby franchise teams are named each year, the players get to test out the jerseys. Yeah, yeah so we're in the training strip. Um, it looks good. I, I like it. So. Ah, oh, it'll be good to get out there and do some training in the new year. Looking resplendent in the new training kit, 31-year-old Highlanders veteran hooker Liam Coltman has been rehabilitating his left knee after suffering an injury. Yeah, yeah, f yeah for, uh, for MPC, yeah, no, it worked out well for myself. Um, able to rehab my knee and get it right, and then a couple of weeks later, once the season kicked back off, I was back into things, so no, it was happy days for myself, to be honest, but, yeah. yeah. How was the knee? Was yeah, the yeah. Right no. one? Was the knee? Uh, left, left, left knee, yeah. I uh, did my um, MCL, so uh, no, it's all good now. The Southern stalwart is approaching his 10th season and is looking forward to the new looking Super Rugby season. Yeah, no, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a good team, it's a good mix of old fellas and young fellas and uh, some guys that have been around the church for a couple of years now that are um, coming into their own and had awesome NPCs. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about what this team can do next year. Coltman was looking sharper with less hair than last season at the recent Highlanders team uniform launch. He attributes the image tweak to his wife and sponsors. In Dunedin, the South Today. Rain didn't stop hundreds of people from enjoying some wine, food and a bit of bidding in our town last Friday. Guests sought some cover from the pouring rain for the annual Long Lunch event. For the 11th year, Buckingham Street was filled with hundreds of people enjoying food and drink from nearby restaurants. The lunch included a silent auction which featured some of Aratown's local artists. All proceeds from the event will go to the Aratown Volunteer Fire Brigade. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Protesters say they accidentally stopped a passenger train in Dunedin after trying to disrupt a coal delivery from going north. The Dunedin Forsyth Bar Stadium has given its new grass a first cut a year and a half away from the Women's FIFA World Cup. And Kevin the Kitten is a nine week old Burmese ragdoll helping those in Port Chalmers who are nervous about getting their Pfizer vaccine. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we welcome Associate Editor Jo Simpson. Kia ora Jo. Hi. Um, so we'll have more details as they emerge on the shooting in Winton. Mm. Um, a survey shows that most residents don't know what the ORC does, and those that do think they do it poorly. Wakatipu school pupils may end up on the public buses, and the Town Hall Community Christmas dinner has been cancelled oh. after the logistics of providing dinner to both the vaccinated and vaccinated proved unsolvable problem. And victims warned, warned the public as a rapist is released from prison after 20 years. All right, Joe. Thanks Thank very you. much. Now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Starting with today's southern view, taking of Dunedin's Christmas tree in the octagon. Looking at the situation, mild and humid for a few days as north-northeasterly airflow develops over the region. And as we head to the north of the island, everywhere looks much alike. 17 in rain for both Westport and Greymouth. That same over in the northeast, too. Rain and 17 for Blenheim, 18 for Nelson. Consistent down the Canterbury coast as well, just a bit cooler, 14 degrees and showers everywhere. 
Moving down south now, the Catlins is the odd one out on 15 degrees with night northeasterlies, 19 and fine everywhere else with light to moderate northerly winds. In central now, Tiano sees a fine 18 degree day with moderate northerlies, light winds and some cloud for the other three centres on 20 or 21 degrees. Further north, Twizel and Amarama match central, light winds and cloud on 20 or 21 degrees, a wee bit cooler on the coast with stronger northeast winds, Timaru and Awamaru reaching 16 degrees on a mostly grey day. In Dunedin, cloud, mist and fog tonight with an overnight low of 9. Cloudy both tomorrow and Wednesday too with north to northeast winds getting stronger. 14 and 10 tomorrow, 18 and 11 on Wednesday. And it's a fine night tonight in Invercargill on 7 degrees. Fine for the next two days as well with only light cloud and northerly winds coming and going. A mild 19 and 8 tomorrow reaching 23 and 11 on Wednesday. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō rā kia pai te pō. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.